In this video, we're going to talk about autofocus settings. That's really the holy grail of, uh, of these kind of cameras. The Z9 is made for action, it's made for sports. Actually, we're going to focus on AFC, the continuous uh, autofocus. That's going to be important because there are other autofocus modes or manual focus. This video is about action uh, setting, basically. How to, how to take care of action, sports, nature, and any other activity that has to follow subjects. We're going to actually detail all the AF area modes and the subjects detections which is completely new on Z9 and it could actually be confusing for some of you guys who know exactly about these actually historical modes but this layer of subject detection is very important to to know actually and, and what to see exactly what it gives I'm gonna tell you how it works in terms of space positioning and movement in the uh, area I, I, will, I will use uh, my colleague here Roland in the frame to actually show you how the different modes work so we just press the I menu here, and you, as you see, the focus mode is selected on AFC. Again, I won't talk about AFS and manual focus. AFC is my priority here. And the different area modes, I will just scan through them and see, uh, explain to you what are the differences. Uh, the, the, the first one is the single one, the historical mode. That's the small box, basically. When I just select this one and I press it, as you can see on the subject, I just have to move it manually myself it is not moving in the frame I choose exactly there the smallest possible area where I can focus and that would be exactly how it works so it works just in depth it, it checks and, and it acquires what's in depth so it's very simple mode it's not very easy to use in AFC but that's a very uh, a very precise mode and the smallest one again if I then go to the next ones there are three ones which is dynamic area S, it's basically the most, uh, the quickest uh, AF mode. It's really the quickest ones. It's the most simple, but actually the most active as well. These three modes, the dynamic area modes, are exactly the same, but the different, different size and shape, basically. If I look at it, on, uh, when I select the S, for instance, you see a small square, a red square, uh, that's the AF points and surrounding spool points. If the subject stays in the box, that's absolutely fine, it's acquired. But it's, if it goes around e within the points, it's also fine. How to use it and when to use, when to use it, it's just very simple. It's when you know exactly where you want the subject to be in, in the frame. And also, uh, it depends on the size of the subject in the frame. If the subject is quite large, for instance, a motorcycle full size in a, with a long lens, you would use Dynamic S because you know exactly where to shoot. But if you go to the, uh, for instance, to the L version, the largest one, you see that we're gonna, you're gonna acquire a very large zone. And this zone is gonna be much broader just to acquire a smaller subject in the frame. For instance, a, an airplane very far in, in the sky or a small bird and, st and stuff like that. This, uh, this uh, AF mode is, is like a trap, actually. So the bigger the trap, it's easier to catch a smaller subject. It might be, look different a different way, but that's the way it works. So I would choose dynamic area L for small subjects that are quickly quick and, and, and very difficult to acquire or to, or to track, actually. Now we're gonna go to the wide area S and L. It's exactly the same kind of uh, activity and, and behavior than the single points, but just larger. But we'll see in the, in, the, in, 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 in the later stage, actually, that with the subject recognition, it's completely a different world with this uh, mode, actually. So this one works, all, again, within the box. So the use of this one would be like more if you know exactly which plane, actually, which will you, or your subject will be will going. For instance, for high jump in sports, you know that it will be between the bars that actually the athlete goes, and that will be exactly where you want to have your box, and you stay there. Exactly the same for the L. It's way much bigger, actually. You can see it's a very large box to, to be within. Anything that comes within this box will be acquired in terms of focus. And now the two last ones, which are 3D and automatic, that are like the, the smartest ones, the most intelligent ones. The 3D was very acclaimed, I would say, in, in the D5 and D6 and D4S. 
this is a very, very nice mode. Uh, actually, it's like a target acquisition, like in an air aircraft fight, uh, fighter, for instance. When you acquire your, your, your target, you see how it, how it goes? So I would just use it on my colleague here, and uh, I would just see, uh, show you how it works. When I press the, the shutter release button, actually it acquires a subject, it can be a face, but it can also be an object, for instance, that's the camera. And again, if I just don't want to follow it, especially, it's, it's just tracking. And you see how, how, how broad it is, actually. It can be on the very side of the picture, from one side to the other. It's quite impressive, actually, how it follows. So that's the way the, the 3D works. So 3D means actually spatially and, and, and also in depth. So it's all dimensions actually that the subject is acquired. Again, if, for instance, if I want to shoot the hands of, of Roland, it's easy, it's gonna be acquiring. I won't move from, from the hands, okay? So that's, that's how it works. The last one is actually the auto mode. The auto mode could be something like you not you would not want to uh, to be trusting because it's not easy to just know exactly what it's going to be doing. That's very simple. It's just thing for you actually. It just tells uh, the camera would just decide exactly what the subject is important in terms of movement, in terms of what it is. So here, of course, you see exactly it's surrounding the, the face of, of my colleague because it's exactly the, the, the most important subject in the frame for the camera. So even if it's, yeah, it's going this way, it's gonna be constantly, constantly acquiring the, the right one. So for instance, if you're using this mode, you want to use it for two different reasons. For instance, if you don't see exactly what you're shooting, for instance, really higher, uh, in, in higher positions like that, or uh, if you have a subject that will just enter in the frame, but you don't know exactly where, for instance, a skier that is jumping from a hill, uh, is it's jumping, but you don't, know, you don't know exactly where it's gonna be actually entering the frame. So that's the mode that you want to, to choose because it's the one that will be much, much faster than you are actually. And it would be um, giving you just better results if you use this one. Of course, in different situations, there are different modes. So just to summarize, just the DAF modes without subject recognition, you have the single, the wide area S and L, which are three boxes, quite flat, I would say, in terms of recognition. It's just within the box, it works. Then the dynamic area, S, M, and L, that's the ones that are actually dynamic and the, the most efficient, the most, uh, the fastest ones to acquire a, a long distance subject within an area that can move, can move slightly and it would be a trap for subjects that are very, very difficult to acquire. And last advice on this one, it would be also where there are many, many subjects in the frame because the 3D then, the last two ones, the 3D would be more for one subject or a few ones you can switch amongst and the auto one, as I just said to you, if you can't see exactly what you're shooting or you don't know when the subjects or where the subject will enter the frame, that would be automatic. Now we're gonna go to the subject detection layer of the Z9, actually. That's the brain level. It works like a neural network. It's very, very smart. And actually you can choose amongst a number of different subjects. If I just go easily and quickly, I would just put them all. There are nine types of, the subje of subject that you can detect from human to animals to certain type of vehicles. Here I'm gonna put them all just to show you how actually the combination between the AF area modes and subject detection work. So we're gonna go for wide S and for instance, that's how it works. You see that if I am uh, focusing, focusing on, on the camera, you have the red box, it's focusing like normal. But if I go actually on a subject who is a human being, Roland, yes he is, actually you can see that the, the, the box is on the arms, but it's not focusing on the arms. It's showing you the arms, but actually it's focusing right away 
it's yellow on the, the, on the eyes. And that's very, very different and very new. So you see exactly how it goes. If you want to focus on someone or a vehicle or any kind of subject that is detectable, it's gonna jump right away to the actually, the, the most important part, which is the face or the helmets on a motorcycle or the uh, plane windows uh, on, in the cockpit, for instance. That's how it's gonna work. So the wide area is to be placed where the subject's gonna be, but not like precisely exactly on the, on the face. So that's very, very new actually. Again, the same for wide area L, it's just a larger box, but it's exactly the same. If I'm just even like that, on, on the side, if like a 10% of the box is on a body, it's gonna be focusing on the body itself and on the face and the eyes even more precisely. Same for the 3D mo modes. The 3D mode could be, again, very disturbing if you want to acquire, for instance, the hands. Even if I have the, the hands in the frame, actually, that's the eyes that are in de in detected and focused. So if you want to focus on the hands of someone, you have to unlock or just de deactivate the uh, subject detection. So that's really, really smart, but again, quite be confusing. So it's very important to know how it's working and then you can use it in complete knowledge. So you see it works very, very well and you see how small actually the box can be on an eye and very, very quick to follow a subject. The last one is the automatic and then we are not talking anymore about uh, choosing the area. The camera does it itself. So. The only thing that you dis is displayed on the camera, on the frame here, it's actually the subject that is of importance. So that means if I go here, it's gonna be the camera. If I go there again, but if I just switch here, you see that it's the face and the eyes. So really actually, auto area again is very, very cool. And if you just combine it with uh, the subject detection in many, many instances, actually this, this uh, mode is gonna be a killer. That's the smartest. That would be actually how you, you behave yourself. If you just look at a scene, you, you look at something or someone and you focus on the, on the eyes of the person and that's how it's gonna behave for the pictures. It's gonna be a big, big success rate. So you've seen, again, the, the AF area modes and then the subject detections that can be combined. You have to activate and deactivate on purpose and knowing exactly what you want to do. The last bit of this, uh, this video is to talk about the few settings that are important to, to manage and to know when, when, we, when it comes to custom settings. So we're gonna dive into now the custom settings. I would just advise you a few things, a few tips to, for action shooting. First one, a1 is the AF priority selection. With this generation of body, I would advise you just to keep always the same setting. It's release priority in A1. That means you don't want to have to be, you want to be in focus, but the camera is so fast that just you just don't want to delay by any mean the, the, the first shot. So even if you just do release, the first shot might not be in focus, but the second one will be sharp. So that's the way to go, and actually I would just advise you to keep always on, on release. The second one would be A3. A3 is a, a historical setting that has been released in 1995 with F5, and now it's even more advanced because there are two layers of, of settings. Lock on. AF lock-on, very famous, I would say, at, uh, at Nikon for the AF. It's how long, actually, the AF stays on the main subject that is acquired before going to something that is in the frame in front of the subject. So, for instance, a vehicle going behind trees or two runners going in front of each other, that would be actually the, the, the situation where the AF lock-on has to decide whether to stay on the, on the subject you acquired or to jump in front to the subject that has been acquired in the meantime. So just if you want to, to make sure that it's gonna be quite reactive uh, for instance, uh, where there are many football players or many people or many subjects in the frame, you would, you would keep it on quick, like two, one, two or three maximum. But if you know that actually there's gonna be always obstacles and stuff like that, you would go to delayed. Delayed means you won't care about any obstacle and you would 
stay on your subject, and that would be going to five in terms of, of setting. And the second layer of, of, of the subject lock-on is to help it to know if your subject are steady or erratic. Steady doesn't mean they are stable and don't move, actually. That means that their movement is predictable. That, for instance, a motorcycle, you know for the next seconds that during their, 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 their run, they would go on a certain curve, on a certain trajectory. But, for instance, um, badminton players or football players, they would move always, all the time, and actually the prediction of their next move is much more difficult. So you would go for erratic. So that would be the difference between the two subjects. Here I would just choose like uh, number three, very, very, I would say between steady, uh, between quick and delayed, and steady for the subject motion. Then I would go to directly to A5. A A5 is a very special mode that actually, when you're shooting vertical or horizontal, you can actually, if you want, store in the, in the camera the focus modes and the focus point location. So sometimes you might think that actually your camera doesn't work properly because you have activated A5 and you, you said to the, to the camera, I've chosen a different modes like AFS and a point and AFC auto for different uh, orientations. So I will show you how it works, this uh, storage of points by orient orientation. So again, if I go this way, here, as you can see in my modes, I am AFC and auto area AF horizontally. Now, if I go vertical, so I'm gonna frame vertically here, and I'm choosing a different mode. For instance, in vertical, again, I've, I've chosen AFC, even, even for the sake of the setting, actually, I would choose AFS, very disturbing, I would say, and AF uh, area mode, just like a single point. So if I choose that, you see that I displayed AFS in, in the settings, and right there, it's automatic with, with uh, subject recognition. So you see how different it can be actually vertically and horizontally. So even if you're like that, actually, you're tilting down your camera, it could switch from one, one AF mode to the other because you're actually horizontal, vertical, just like that. So really be careful with this one. When you, when you manage this, it's very, very powerful. But you, know, you have to know again what you're doing, otherwise it's going to be like that. And you see it doesn't move at all, and here it's moving. Not moving, moving again. So for, for those who, are, who don't need actually to have these two selections, vertical and horizontal, you have to deactivate this function. Otherwise it's very, very useful, for instance, if you're shooting a marathon, the arrival of the marathon, and you want to shoot, shoot always the faces of the, of the people arriving, you have one mode or, or vertical, and then horizontally, completely different thing, like wider uh, frame and something else, like automatic and stuff like that. It's very, very useful. For the rest of the settings, it would be like secondary, I would say. It's more like how, to, how the focus point behave or not to choose all the modes in the selection to be faster, but really we focused again on A1, the priority of, of AFC, uh, the focus tracking, and the AF points stored by orientation. For the rest, it's other things like that are also more about manual focus and things. It's not the purpose of this very video. So we've, been, we've gone around a number of settings which are applicable to uh, thousands of situations. I hope you could uh, make your head around your, this, this kind of settings. And thanks for watching this video and I hope that this kind of advices will just help you to, to select from the sharp images that you made. See you soon.